Hey guys, Raiden here, and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. Last time, all of our friends died. That's really yeah. it. We lost everyone. Uh, Callista, and what was his face? The rogue we knew for about three seconds yeah. died. <laughs> uh, it's kind of sad, and we escaped from the ruins. I don't know why I'm sneaking right now. Anyways. Uh, there was a guy here, but I think he left. So, we were on our way to... Let's take a look. The Gilded Vale. Now, I want to explore Valewood some more. And if you remember, we met a man out here. And he's like, hey, look. There is a bear that killed my buddy. But I gotta get out of here. I don't have time. This place just isn't safe. So, I'm going to Gilded Vale to get away. And he's probably going to leave Gilded Vale too, I'm guessing. So... I don't feel like fighting a bear all by myself. I'm going to wait until I have more party members. So we're going to go ahead and travel to Gilded Vale, see if we can find any party members, and check up on what's going on here. So, so far we've discovered our first side quest. I still have no idea what's going on in terms of the main story. Just because, you know, nothing has made any sense yet. You must be one of the new settlers. Welcome to Gilded Vale. You'll be pleased to know that we've had some recent vacancies here. Alright, sorry. I was turning off my fan. Um, I'll just read it all because I don't think he read everything. A man approaches you, his skin dull and gray, as desolate as village behind him. Or as the desolate village behind him. He scans you with sunken, lifeless eyes. You must be one of the new settlers. His voice is a dry croak. Welcome to Gilded Vale. You'll be pleased to know that we've had some recent vacancies here. He glances at the gnarled, leafless monstrosity of a tree next to him. Do you welcome everyone this way? Are you mad? No wonder this place looks half empty. I feel at home already. Yeah, the dead bodies all over the trees make me feel just fine. I might reconsider your lord's offer. So if you remember, we were on our way because someone, like, someone specifically offered us something, which I have very little knowledge as to what it is yet, but that's why we were on that caravan. Someone offered us something, and we're like, we don't know if we're going to take it yet. So, do you welcome everyone this way? The only answer you hear is the buzzing of the flies from the tree. Of course, we'll need to make some inquiries first. The inestimable Lord Radric VII has taken great pains to insulate our town from Widewind's legacy. Have you ever sired a hollowborn child? Uh, have I ever sired a hollowborn child? I don't know what a hollowborn child is. Mind your own damn business. I refuse to answer. That's a rather personal question. What are you talking about? Is the better An question? An infant born without a soul, of course. Lord Raderick has made it his first priority to eliminate this scourge from our village. Okay, so... Oh, wow. An infant born without a soul. I should it's warn harsh. you, stranger. Here in Gilded Vale, we have a special place for dissidents, charlatans, and those who would hide a curse in our midst. He steps to the side and inclines his head ever so slightly towards the deformed tree. His lordship's wife is with child and due any day now. Without his approval, I shan't be able to find you a permanent settlement. It will have to wait until after the birth. We can continue he our interview then, after the bell tolls from Radric's hold to signal my lord's new heir. In the meantime, you can find temporary accommodations at the inn just southwest of here. All right, that's where I plan on going next. Uh, I've been feeling strange ever since a close call with the Biavok. Is there someone in town who could help? You said something about Hollowborn and Waden's legacy before. Before I got here, I saw several people conducting a strange ceremony. I'd rather not tell them about that. Uh, Whatever your problem, it sounds like a matter for an Animancer. However, the only Animancer in Gilded Vale isn't in any condition to speak. Consider yourself fortunate. After she failed Lord Radric, 
We saw to it that she wouldn't profit from the misplaced trust of others. A bad cure is often worse than none at all. But if you're set on finding a bottle of troll piss or a dead Audra pebble to rub on your forehead, you're welcome to check her pockets. A little corpse stink is nothing when you're digging for shit. My advice, however, is to be satisfied that you escaped and leave it at that. Um... Okay, this guy is a jerk. He is super creepy, super pessimistic, and I don't like him. He said something about Hollowborn and Wyden's legacy before. He blinks. I forget that you foreigners do not have this curse in your homelands. The Hollowborn have been a scourge upon the Direwood for almost 15 years now. He lowers his voice to a whisper. Children born without souls. That's the only thing I find that breaks immersion with this game is it's it's not the first or second sentence that he stops voice acting. It's these conversations that have that I have options and then three of the options will have no voice acting and then two of them will. I don't know, but I feel like in a modern day game they could they could get some voice acting. Although, once again, Kickstarter. He shakes his head. Pitiful dumb things that breathe, barely, but do not truly live. Some say hollowborn are a disease. Some say they are punishment from the gods. He raises his empty hands. In truth, no one knows. But they began spreading after the Saints' War. And so the name, Waden's Legacy, stuck in honor of that foul blasphemous pretender. He shakes his head with vitriol. Vitriol? Vitriol. I've never heard... I need to look up that word later. All right, I'm just going to say goodbye. Of... What is going on Listen. over there? Two tolls. Let that be the last. Three. Gods have mercy. What what does three tolls signify? Your arrival is ill-timed. Uh Urgate I'm mean, just guessing his name is Urgat or Urgat. Urgat looks towards the east, his expression unreadable. He blinks slowly and turns his attention back to you. And he already said Three that. bells toll only for the death of a Radric. I fear Lord Radric's heir is lost, or else Hollowborn, and so lost all the same. You should tread carefully. Circumstances have changed a great deal. What do you mean? You come to us at a time of mourning. The legacy has struck at the heart of the Gilded Vale. Our efforts to redeem ourselves in the eyes of Bereth must be redoubled. He sets a steady gaze at you, or on you. Um, don't threaten me, little man. How does, does this affect the Lord's offer to new settlers? I can't be sure of... I can be sure of nothing right now. I advise you to get some rest. The inn or a stable for all I care. Find me afterwards. I will know more soon enough. What happened? He shrugs one bony shoulder. I will know more details when the messengers arrive. The vagaries of childbirth, perhaps. But that is not your concern. Farewell. I really do not want to get on this guy's bad side, although I really don't like him. Uh, let's talk to this dude. Aider. Were you looking for someone in that tree? I yeah, smell I a party member. You. No one has a portrait, just a random portrait like this. Um, looking for anyone who can help me feel better. Strange way to talk about your dead. No, I don't need any help. Um. Yeah, it's strange. He looks up at the tree and breathes out. Half the town's up there now. Seems like no right way to talk about it. I'm looking for someone who can help me feel better. I guess. He gives an understanding nod as he takes a long drag from his pipe. My condolences. He exhales and turns his attention away, watching the village around him. Welcome to our lovely village. Poor lady, what happened to her? Okay, well, I guess I'll talk to that guy later. I guess maybe I can't get him as a party member yet. Or maybe he's not one at all. 
Poor Afra is so worried about her child, I don't blame her. Oh, what's going on here? A loth? Looks like we have a sorcerer of some kind. You see four people gathered by the door to the inn. Their raised voices and chopping gestures suggest an argument reaching its climax. The first figure raises his hands for claim. His face is partially obscured by a hood, but his height and stature suggest an elf. I meant no offense. Let's put this matter to rest over a round, shall we? My treat. Hoping to soothe our pride with a few Adira coppers, eh? We don't need your coin. Uh, I can say nothing. Everyone calm down. There's, uh, I'm sure it's an overreaction. Ooh, a fight. What's going on? Um. One of the other men points at the hooded elf. His eyes are red from the drink, but his gaze is focused. Mocking us even while he shelters in our village just goes to show you what these fancy Aider manners are worth. We don't take that kind of treatment, not from foreigners, and especially not from Aiderns. A a Aiderns? Go yeah, I'll on. just say that. Say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. Okay. Fire you're itching for the kindling touch of your sister, you cocksfeather! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of insult that was, but I'm sure it was great. A collective cry out uh, of outrage rises from the three locals. The second man snarls, I'll cut that barrel-looking tongue out of your head. I don't know when he became a pirate. He just did. Horror and shock paint themselves across the elven man's face in broad, hasty strokes. This is a misunderstanding. I didn't say... He frowns and swallows. Whatever it is you think I said. He plants his feet. Sure, Something surely and raw flickers through his eyes. We've, na we've nigh quarrel. That's where okay. you're wrong. That's where you're wrong. I don't think attacking him is such a good idea. Back down all of you. This is absurd. This is unnecessary. Wouldn't you rather be drinking than out here arguing? You're not going to take uh, that from him, are you? I'm staying out of this one. I'm going to say, I don't think attacking him is such a good idea. Uh, the three drunks scowl at you, and why is that? Perception? I don't have that. I don't have intellect. Because then you'll have me to deal with. I'm going to take a side. Just why not? I, three on one's just not fair. They look at each other. One of the men gives the other two a, a warning shake of his head before turning to you. We're done for now. But this one better watch his step around here because we're not going anywhere. With a final scowl at the elf, he turns to leave. So it looks like we did a successful, like, scare on them. As the three stumble away, the elf turns to you. The tension almost gone from his smooth face. Not quite how I hope to get to know the neighbors. Thank you for your timely assistance with that awkward situation. You mean for making them piss their pants? You're welcome. <laughs> he gives you a quick smile. Well, that is one way of putting it. He straightens his hood, and you note the remains of fraying embroidery on his gloves. His boots are caked with the dirt of many months' travel, but the leatherwork beneath is sturdy and fine. Well, I suppose introductions are in order after that little fiasco. Aloth Corvisser, at your service. Um, tell me about yourself. Well, I'm a wizard by training, and... An adventurer by necessity. I was born in the Seathwood, part of the mainland of the Adir Empire, and both of my parents served the nobility, which afforded me an education for which I am grateful. However, there were no open positions in those houses, and so I decided to seek new means in a new land. And how exactly did you come to be here? I was traveling with a caravan, but we were separated near some ruins. In Gwythan ruins? Oh, those can be dangerous places during the best of times, which these are not. In half the locals would arrest you for trespassing, and the rest would kill you outright. I'm curious. What exactly did you find there? Um, I'm not going to lie to him. I feel like being straight up with this guy is the answer. Uh, several hooded figures operating a strange machine. Aloth goggles at you silently. 
Apparently assessing your earnestness, finally he gives you a clipped, awkward laugh. You do manage to find yourself in rather interesting predicaments. Um, what are you doing in Gilded Vale? An excellent question. I came looking for fresh air and cheap land. Instead, the magistrate gave me directions to the inn and a story about the local lord's expectant wife. But I take it that's a familiar tale. Ah. I feel like he's not telling us the entire truth. Oh. <laughs> I'm having too much fun with that. Um. Like you said, I'm also a settler. I've been experiencing strange things of late. I'm looking for an expert on souls. Indeed. The local lord has searched far and wide for similar specialists. He has rid himself of them almost as desperately. He nods at the gnarled old tree at, in the center of town. His darting glance takes in the nimble down buildings, or the in the tumble down buildings, and the follow rock strewn fields. I expect that such expertise would be best sought elsewhere. All right, um, you don't look like a settler. Uh, a sly grin crosses his lips, begging your pardon, but neither do you. Yet circumstances can find a person in the strangest of places. I agree. So, just how did you come across these three drunks? I'm afraid that was a matter of misunderstandings and mistranslations. It doesn't help that people in these parts remember their war with Adir like it was yesterday. You did make a rather lewd suggestion regarding one of the aggressors and his own sister. Ah, that. He clears his throat and adjusts his sleeves. As I tried to tell them, they misheard me. Happens all too easily after a few points. And the accent doesn't help. I see. For which I am grateful. I should get How going. should I, given recent events? It's just as well. I've had enough of the watered wine and lumpy beds at the inn. They say even the owner tired of the place. Just up and left one day. It explains quite a lot about the upkeep. Perhaps I could join you. I could use a change of scenery, and I find it's better to travel in numbers. And I could use a party member so I don't get mauled by bears. Excellent. I shall follow you. Awesome. We have our yeah. very first party member. And he is a... Let's take a look at his sheet. He is a level 2 wizard. He is a wood elf. And not much about his background. He has very high lore, which is going to become useful, I assume. Um, right now, he knows Arcane Assault. Okay, I don't know what any of those are yet. Personal? Okay, no, I don't know anything about him. So, yeah, we know he's a wizard, and how wizards work is they have a spell book here. Now, as far as Arcane Assault goes, it is a spell that he can cast twice per encounter. So that's just a type of stun and damage he can do every time. But, he has something called a Grimoire. Which what the Grimoire is, is, if I look at it here, you can equip a certain amount of spells per level. And it goes all the way up to level 10, it seems like. So, right now he only has some level 1 spells. Let's see what he has. He has Minoletta's Minor Missiles. Summons three spell missiles that batter the target, inflicting crush damage. I'm not exactly sure how crush damage works yet. I'll figure it out. Um, we have Archimere's Dazzling Lights. Overwhelms anyone in the area of effect with a brilliant and bewildering pyrotechnic display, decreasing their will and leaving them dazed. Okay, so it's another daze, but it's an AoE. Uh, we have Calicost Sunless Grasp. Attacks Deflection. The caster's hands become so cold as to freeze what they touch. Does freeze damage to a target and reduces its accuracy. And last we have Fan of Flames, creates a cone of fire in front of the caster, causing burn damage to anyone in the area of effect. So those are our spells. He has one yeah. more, but it is a cloning spell, I believe. And it basically just makes another one of him as a distraction. So I believe this is the end, so let's stop by there. Anyone seen? Okay, so the villagers actually don't have voices. Well, right, well, let's go to this inn. Good day to you. Oh, greetings and welcome to the Blackhound Inn. The innkeeper bows her head curly.
Please sit where you like. Would you like a drink or a room? We have two available at the moment. I'm afraid we can't offer much by way of good meal today. She sighs. Unless you're fond of cold porridge. I'd like a room. I'd like some help. When you say I'd like some help, you're hiring party members. I don't have enough money to do that. Olaf opens his mouth but seems to reconsider. Nothing for me, thanks. Of course we're running a little short on goods these days, but we ought to have more soon. I don't actually want a drink. The camping kits are nice, but I'm too poor for that once again. I'm going to be selling things I don't need. Like all of this stuff here. Now, there's actually very interesting ways I like to play the monk. Now, the monk, you can go find barehanded. And it would seem like, oh, the, bunks, the monk is your light fighter. He'll always be fine in combat by himself. He'll be able to dodge everything. He's super cool. Well, that's not entirely right. In the beginning, it's important to have your monk equip some heavy armor. Because he needs wound stacks to, be cut, to get to his full potential. So until you get your deflection and a bunch of your skills and feats so that... You can survive battles without having to have that heavy armor on. Keep it on. So, I might just have him use a shield just to be safe. So, I'm not going to sell that. I'm going to let him... I'm going to sell this dagger. Oh, uh, the leather armor should be useful. Um. Oh, wow. We can examine the wolf hide. I did not know that. The wolves of Direwood are a large and crafty breed. Uh... Bereft, it's so hard to read with this font. I can't tell if that's an F or an L. I think it's an F. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Uh, bereft of the species. Usual shyness, and they present a serious hazard to travelers who venture off the beaten path. Hunters who seek them out will not usually contend with a single wolf, for they travel in packs of varying size, presenting a challenge to any lone hunter. All right, well, I'm going to sell that. I'm going to keep this helmet. I'm going to keep one torch. I don't know of anyone that can use a crossbow or a poleaxe, so I'm going to sell that. Now, if I look in our stash, we have hide armor, which is light armor, and more leather armor. So I don't need that at the moment. And I believe... I don't think I'd want spear spider leg... Can I sell that or I'll sell this Jasper? I don't we might be able to use this vessel flash for something. I'm gonna sell this a gate too and this amethyst. So we're gonna trade all that in, and now we have quite a bit of money. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to create my first party member. Just so I have someone else with me. Now, the cool thing is, as I said, I'm going to have two NPC party members. Wait, no, I'm gonna have three NPC party members. And two pre-made ones. I promised a couple of my friends, actually, that I'd make characters of their choosing in the game. So I gave them descriptions and what I wanted them to be like. So it came out to be like this. Alright, so first, I'm going to be making our rogue. And we're going to be hiring a level 1 adventurer. He's going to be male. And I'm actually going to make him a godlike. Now, uh, it says the godlike are children of the kith, civilized races who have been blessed with physical aspects associated with gods, though some do not consider it a blessing. These aspects may take many forms and often come with mystical powers. Apparent head shapes are typical and godlike are unable to wear protective headgear, and it, as it is near impossible to find anything that fits. Because of their unusual nature, and their inability to reproduce, godlike are often viewed with fear and wonder. So they get an extra dexterity and extra intellect, which is nice. So next. And here are the types of godlikes. I'm going to go over every type. Uh, death godlikes. Death godlike are the most distrusted of their kind. Strange growths cover their eyes or in some cases entire face, giving them a sinister appearance. The growths are transparent for the godlike but opaque from the outside. Hiding their features, death godlike are commonly killed at birth because many cultures consider them to be harbingers of doom. That's brutal, just for how they look. I mean, he could be a nice guy. 
Okay, they their passive is Death's Usher. When Death God like attack an enemy with 25% or less endurance, their damage is increased. Now I want to go Death God like because it goes well with rogues because of this. Oh, you also have Fire God likes. The bodies of Fire God like often resemble hot metal, burnt wood, or stone with harmless flames that erupt from the cracks in their skin. Fire God like are objects of both rev reverence and fear in the Deadfire Archipelago. Many locals believe that they have the power to awaken volcanoes, or that killing one will cause a volcano to awaken. In the Direwood, fire godlike are often seen as a sign of blessing of Magron, and Magron is the goddess of war, fire, transformation, and purification. Uh, goddess of war and fire, yeah. Their passive is Battleforge, when reduced below 50%, endurance, fire godlike, glow like metal in a forge. Gaining damage reduction and doing a small amount of fire damage to any creature who hits them. So these guys actually make good tanks or off tanks. You have the moon godlike who I think looks really kind of funky. It reminds me of the girl from uh, Skyward Sword. I can't remember her name. It's Link's helper. I can't remember it. Moon godlike are the most tolerated of the godlike. While their skin tone and a large moon-like growth on their foreheads may be strange to some, their appearances are generally considered more palatable by other kith. Sailors have many beliefs about moon godlike and their propensity... I don't even know how to say that word. Uh, propensity to bring luck. Though there is little agreement as to what kind of luck they bring. Silver Tide. Every encounter, when reduced below 75%, 50%, and 25% endurance... Moon godlike generate waves of healing moonlight that restore their endurance to them and their allies. So, I don't know. I just say that they, they could make a good anything. And lastly, we have nature godlike. Nature godlike appear to be a fusion of human and animal features, often covered by plants, moss, or fungi. This has led to the common stigma that they are diseased. And many are killed at birth. How many of these guys do you have to kill at birth? Many of them are killed at birth because of it. Many druidic orders have seen have a keen interest in nature godlike because of their general curiosity as how souls occupy animals, plants, and stones. Wellspring of Life grants a bonus to might, constitution, dexterity when endurance is low. Okay, so as I said, we're going to go death godlike. Uh, you can actually choose the body type of a godlike because they can be anything. Uh, I'm going to be giving them an elf type body because i think that suits a uh, rogue so i'm going to give an elf type body of course we're going to be making a rogue uh rogues are vicious killers feared for the brutality of their attacks they can be found as often in dark black alleys as the heart of the battlefield skirmishes though unpredictable and undisciplined rogues are commonly used as shock troops or as part of a surprise assault their withering attacks breaking enemy ranks and morale rogues tend to congregate in larger numbers in cities where they can be steadily employed as mercenaries are hired muscle starting ability sneak attacks apply bonus damage to the rogues range and melee weapon attacks okay so when they get sneak attacks they can do things like blind people they can get the flanked which deflection is reduced by 10 hobbled uh have their dexterity so they're slowed they can get Paralyzed, petrified, prone, I don't know what prone is. Prone characters can't even take action or weakened. So they're perfect for afflict inflicting a status alignments. So we're gonna do that. Oh, we have crippling strike, which is uh the rogue attacks his or her enemy's ability to move around effectively, inflicting extra damage to hobbling successful an enemy unit and blinding a dirty attack that makes the opponent unable to see inflicts extra damage and blinds the target blinded accuracy is reduced i prefer blinding strike personally because i don't really i'm not worried about anyone getting away from me usually it's me getting away from them so i'm gonna go with blinding strike all right so next we have our perks it's important to get high dexterity and might i'm actually going to max dexterity Almost. Almost. Um, perception and intellect are pretty important. Uh, because perception increases your deflection. And they kind of need that because rogues drop rather quickly. And intellect is their will. Which basically just increases things like durations. 
and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna put make both of these 12. I think that's a good number right here. See, because of this, he has plus 24% action speed, which is amazing. And he also gets extra damage and healing from the might, so I think we're good on that. A resolve reflects a character's internal drive, concentration, and deflection. I'm actually going to take one off of it and stick it into might. So that's what we're going to do there. Uh, we can choose their culture. Uh, I could go through and read all the cultures, but... We'll get to it eventually, because everyone has these cultures. Uh, we What we care about is the it, are these traits right here. And if anything, uh, extra dexterity you can never go wrong with. So I'm going to make him come from the Deadfire Archipelago. And lastly, I want him to get as much stealth as possible. So if stealth and survival and stealth and athletics, I kind of want stealth and athletics. Because athletics help with physical feats. But we already have some kind of athletics. So maybe survival. Uh, so yeah, he's going to be a hunter before this. Alright, and this one suits the uh, death godlike perfectly. I love this portrait for male death godlike. I don't think there's any female godlike, is there? Maybe there is. I don't know. So his colors, I'm going to make his colors sort of like a dark blue. Or no, I'm going to make his primary colors dark blue, and then like his secondary colors like a lighter blue. And as far as his head, you have these three awesome helmets. And I and this one looks like the one in the picture, but I personally like it less than both of these. This doesn't really speak rogue to me. I mean, that's... I mean, come on, how could you not see that coming? This one is my favorite, personally. I mean, this one is pretty cool, but that that that's sort of like a knight, in my opinion. So let's get back to head number two, and let's continue. So we have everything, and we need to make his voice. Yes. Now I am the leader of the group. Keeping an eye out. Yeah, this, I like this voice. Like that super sinister voice. Awesome. And my friend wanted to name him Ark. So, welcome to our group, our new party member, Ark the Godlike Rogue. Hmm. So, uh, made characters don't get a backstory. They have hmm. dialogue, and by dialogue I mean combat dialogue, but not anything else. But they're still well, super useful. Uh. So, I'm going to end this episode here. It might have actually been a pretty long episode. So, if you guys are enjoying this, tell me. Uh, I love reading lore, by the way, so if you haven't noticed, I kind of read a lot. This game is a lot of reading, and if you don't like reading, you're probably not going to like this this entire Let's Play, or even my channel, because every game I play, I like to stop and read the lore. I like to stop and read everything, So I think it's so cool, some of the universes. This one I have very little knowledge about, and I want to mm. learn about it, so... I'm going to sign off here. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Right now. People live close to the earth and the sky. sky, sky, sky.